We have areas to watch in the Atlantic. We have major hurricane Hillary in the Pacific. A ton to get to in today's video. It's going to be kind of a long one. We're going to break it all down, though. I'll put the description or the chapters in the description so you can scrub along to where you want to go. First and foremost, we're going to start with the Atlantic. Four waves out there, some of them with a high probability. And that one that we were talking about last week now has increasing chances to develop in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to get into that as well. History is likely going to be made in Southern California. California because of what is now major hurricane Hillary. It's already really been made hurricane center issuing its first ever tropical storm watch for Southern California. And then we're going to go in depth with that possible storm in the Gulf. And I do think we are going to have something develop once it clears Florida. So here we go. We have the seven day tropical development zone here. We have the orange increasing chances in the Gulf of Mexico. And then we have three other waves. We're going to get real in depth with a few of these here. Caribbean needs to be paying attention to this one out front although there are some shady signals on this we'll see if it can develop or not there's still a lot of dry air out there then we have this secondary area of low pressure broad area and then the most likely one to develop but not last long and not really impact anything is the one that's the closest to the Cabo Verde Island so we're going to get all into that before we dive in if you want to stay updated on all things weather especially as we venture through the peak of hurricane season you have to hit subscribe Please do that if you find this content helpful. Give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so X marks the spot where the National Hurricane Center here has kind of highlighted that center, quasi-center. If it was a center, it would be a tropical depression by this time. But where they are kind of watching, so here are the three things. This one actually may be pretty close here to becoming a tropical depression. You kind of see the curl there on the northern side. We have to have that complete rounded counterclockwise circulation for it to be considered a tropical cyclone the middle one here it's still by watching the wind field anyway maybe even a few areas of spin in here and this has been the issue all along with these storms that are kind of embedded in what we call a monsoon trough it's a very elongated area here of moisture and low pressure also, you see the trailing one. This is the new one from last night, or the leading one, I should say. X marks the spot there. This is the one that has the potential to maybe develop in the Eastern Caribbean. So again, we are going to be watching that very, very closely. Again, we're going to start with Invest 98L. That is the one that is closer to the Cabo Verde Islands, just quickly. This is really not going to do much. Maybe in its future, we'll watch it for Bermuda. But I really think here, cold front's going to slice this thing apart, and it's going to weaken considerably once it gets out here anyway. So I don't think Invest 98L, the one closest to the Cabo Verde Islands, is going to impact anyone. This is that middle X that we were looking at. We only have the two Invest. It stands for Area of Investigation. It's when the Hurricane Center starts to pay extra close attention, and they start running their models on it specifically for this storm. So here we go with that middle one. Northeast Caribbean want to pay close attention to this as well there are indications and i'll show you the actual model coming up in a little bit that we could try to get this thing to develop a little bit out here right around the parts of the leeward islands still not a huge deal with that middle one but it's going to be that one that leading wave and then the one towards the gulf and i'm going to break down that gulf one a little bit more a little, a little more in depth anyway coming up a little bit We've been showing you the low level spin over the past couple of days and we've talked about really even before it was highlighted that it seemed as if this monsoon trough again this big elongated area that stretches all the way back to africa was going to spit out a few potentially anyway storms and we do have some kind of center trying to get going but it's an open wave right now there's our other wave and then there's the big one that's honestly pretty close to tropical depression status already Look what happens. This is according to the Euro. The Euro much more bullish as it has been this hurricane season to give us a storm in the eastern or central Caribbean. Also to give us something brewing in the Gulf of Mexico. Here is 99L in the central Atlantic and then that is 98L. Again, that's the one that we were looking at that's closer to the Cabo Verde Islands. And you see going into the future here, this is going to be August 22nd. I'll bring back my arrow. And it looks like the two dominant ones on here, according to the Euro, the GFS has a much different scenario. But it's going to be the one that closes in on Texas and then the one in the Central Caribbean. I do have my doubts about how organized the one in the Caribbean could be. So I think that the Euro may be a little too aggressive with that one. That's my hope anyway. I'm going to show you why that is in just a second. First, I want to show you the GFS, and it's similar. It's much weaker with that leading wave, but there is wave number one, that open wave. 
There is wave number two. And draw the little axis there. And then here is number three, although by later on on August 18th, you see it almost has a uh, closed circulation. Let me get my lines off of here. You see it going counterclockwise. So really as early as Friday, August 18th, later on at night, maybe in the start of the weekend, August 19th, we could have our next tropical depression of the hurricane season. Again, that one should be the one that impacts no one other than the fish way out by the Cabo Verde Islands. Notice what happens with the GFS. Okay, so here is that one that enters the Caribbean, that little piece out ahead of Invest 98L, that little X that was right here. They kind of merge to make this tropical wave right here. Again, when that happens, it's really hard for these things to get big and strong because there's a bunch of centers competing to become the dominant one. When there's no dominant center, it adds to the uncertainty, but it also adds to the amount of time that it's going to take for these things to consolidate. There is that area of low pressure, potentially a developing system there moving toward West Texas by the time we get into uh, August 21st, August 22nd, somewhere early next week, Monday or Tuesday. So we're going to be watching that very closely over the weekend. Taking you further out to the 26th, there's no real big, huge area that is kind of barking or sticking out here by August 28th. That's one good thing, but notice down here we have these arrows. We're going to, it looks like, to be able to develop a very broad area of low pressure over Central America. So we're really going to have to watch the Western Caribbean, maybe the Eastern Gulf of Mexico, towards August 28th. Because if this big area of low pressure down here kind of shoots something out, and there's kind of indications of that right here, towards West Cuba, maybe towards the Eastern Gulf of Mexico, Southeast U.S., we're going to watch that closely because the water temperatures are crazy warm, of course, in the Gulf and Western Caribbean. So stay tuned. Again, we're going to be watching that development. But certainly on this run of the American GFS, we are looking pretty good, all things considered. I want to take you to that next tropical wave, the one that we haven't talked about. And this could be the most important one, which is why I wanted to give it extra time. Here is the moisture associated with our tropical wave. Again, look at the scale here. The deeper we get into the yellows, oranges, and rust color, that is where we have the increased tropical moisture. So our wave is kind of hanging out here by later on on Friday afternoon. You can kind of see that little swirl, that moisture surge coming into Florida. This is no doubt going to help to increase rain chances across the Florida Peninsula. Not expected to develop, though, by the time it gets to Florida. So that's some good news here. What isn't good news is you see this big swirl that comes out. I kept on calling this sneaky last week, and this is the reason why model guidance continues to increase that look, if you will. They're starting to trend in that direction, and I said in a previous video as well that the trends are going to be important because if more continue to trend that we're going to see this system here, it becomes more and more likely, of course. We were talking about this since last week, that we might have a little sneaky system, maybe a tropical storm, maybe something a little stronger than that, getting towards maybe south of Houston, towards Corpus Christi or Brownsville. So we're going to watch that closely. Again, the jury is still going to be out on this, but the environment, what we do know now, looks to be really good for development. Unfortunately, we've got extremely warm water temperatures in the western gulf the wind shear backs off in this little corner anyway of the atlantic basin where it stays pretty strong with those other three waves so we're going to be watching that very very closely as that moisture surges in hey if you're still with me give me a thumbs up it does help us out a lot look at this i mentioned at the top of the video that the national hurricane center for the first time in its history issued a tropical storm watch for southern california so this is who would have thought Southern California would have had a tropical watch before anywhere on the Gulf or the Atlantic side of the Atlantic season? Nonetheless, that's what we have here. A pretty decent shot, really likely shot here at tropical storm conditions. As of 2 o'clock Eastern time on August 18th, we have a monster hurricane out there. Look at the satellite presentation. It's in a cube there because this is on what was called one of the mesoscale features of the satellite channel. It takes its video every single minute or we get these pictures in every single minute so we can get a really good look at what the storm is doing but this is a monster storm here there's Cabo San Lucas for some perspective this is going to continue to work up towards the Baja Peninsula of California but look at this as we move forward here this is going to be really really close it doesn't matter if this makes 
quote unquote, a landfall. And I'm going to show you more on the historical side of that in just one second in Southern California. This is going to be a very high impact event for California, for San Diego, for Los Angeles, through Death Valley. Some catastrophic amounts of rain coming here, but you see it there already potentially at least forecast by the National Hurricane Center to still be a tropical storm as it crosses San Diego and Los Angeles and then gets toward the Sierra Nevada. So that's super, super rare to be able to have a storm be able to hold its intensity like that, but that is what is currently forecast. Now, we're not talking about a major hurricane. I know there's a lot of videos saying that a hurricane is coming to Los Angeles. That is not happening. There's going to be rapid weakening once it gets a little bit beyond the Baja Peninsula. That's because look at the water temperature. As is typical, off the west coast of the United States, we have the water temperatures only hanging tight in the 60s, maybe even upper 50s just off the coast of L.A. there. So the water temperatures are really, really cool. It's going to help to weaken the storm considerably, but it's going to be a very large and powerful system, so it is going to take some time giving it that opportunity to come on shore. Forget about the landfall potential for just one second. Just look at the amount of rain coming in our direction through parts of Southern California. LA, three, five, maybe up to six inches of rain, especially towards the mountains where you're seeing that yellow color. So there we go into Death Valley, three, four, five inches of rain expected, potentially even doubling that on an isolated scale through the uh, Nevada border, through Western Nevada into Southern California. It's crazy stuff. Again, they don't see this in a year, let alone a couple of days here as this rolls through on Sunday into early Monday. So we're going to be watching that. And that's likely going to be something that unfolds there. Significant flash flooding for the first time also ever since I believe that product was put in place in 2010. The uh, Weather Prediction Center highlighted areas east of the mountains in a very high risk for flash flooding. That's obviously super rare because you have typically anyway when you have all the rain out here the wind comes down the other side of the mountains and dries things out. That is why there's a desert there. One of the reasons, anyway, we also have that semi-permanent uh, high, uh, semi high-pressure system that chills out in the southwest corner of the U.S. It's why we have the desert there. Look at some of the wind gusts coming through. We could be pushing hurricane force gusts coming out of into Southern California, maybe into southwest Arizona as well. Southern Nevada, it's going to get quite windy at times as well. So we will see if that tropical storm watch gets extended at all further north. Regardless, it's not really about the wind, which will be significant anyway for Southern California and the desert Southwest standards. It's going to be about the rain. That's the main thing here. That's what's going to make this such a high end tropical deal. Speaking of the tropical deal here, it has a chance to make a landfall. If it takes that track further to the right, it's not going to technically qualify as a landfall in Southern California. If it stays to the west side of that track the left side it will be able to make a landfall we haven't had a landfall in southern california since way back in 1939 that came ashore just around los angeles right here you see that spinning most others kind of die out when you see these l's in a circle here that is a tropical depression but notice most of them end up over here and kind of fizzle out over the mountainous terrain of northern Mexico, over the Baja Peninsula. And then some of that tropical moisture surges into the desert southwest. This is going to be a much different story than, than what we're used to in southern California and the desert southwest. And we do have an influx of moisture from a dying tropical system. This is going to be high impact. This is going to be crazy. This is likely going to go down to the history books. And again, in some degree, it already has because... The Hurricane Center, for the first time, for the first time in its history, issued a tropical storm watch for Southern California. Again, there's a potential for a landfall on the west coast of the United States before a landfall on the east coast or gulf side of the United States. So just some crazy stuff there. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, a lot to watch here as we watch the Atlantic kind of flare up a little bit. I think for the most part, the bark is a little worse than its bite, but there's a couple of things that we're watching. Again, that one that could enter the Caribbean, and then I think the one that has the antennas raised up most is if we can get something crazy to happen with that storm along the Texas coast. So again, please be mindful to that. If you're happening to be watching from Texas, especially on the coastline there, just pay close attention. Again, I, I'm hoping that it's nothing crazy and doesn't ramp up real fast like a Hannah did. But I do think that is in the realm of possibilities that this is weak, weak, weak. And then all of a sudden at the last minute here, models start to catch on uh, for a much stronger storm than what is currently being presented by 
the model forecast. And again, you saw the percentage go up by the National Hurricane Center for, de for Development. I do think we might start to get ourselves into that scenario where we're going to have to watch that closely because the Gulf is going to be pretty much perfect conditions for development as that weak tropical wave leaves Florida this weekend. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on all things weather, hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you next time.